Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 17. Thoughts? This episode is called Identity and Change. Another episode, another episode I love. I suppose for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, let's see. The, yeah, great opening between Coulson and and Daisy, I enjoyed the, you know, Colson explaining this, you know, pretty far-fetched, you know, scenario they're they're going through, and Daisy being like, yeah, that's that's right, that's it, and Colson says the news is fake, so fake news, and. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because of the mind control soap. Yeah, exactly. Wait, what? <laughs> so, yeah, it's... <laughs> Framework Coulson is not 100% accurate about everything. He's figured some stuff out, but that's... Yeah, and, and I gotta say, I did not at all see coming that he... Yeah. He does actually have something against Hydra, but, yeah, he's he's going along to get along. And let's see. Yeah, um <laughs> pretty funny the the you know student who's apparently played by Clark Gregg's actual daughter, Stella Gregg. You know, she she comes in and she's like, Okay, so I did all my homework, but then my dad made me you know, and, and Colson's like, Amy, we've been over this. Before first bell is my time, okay? It's like, okay, geez, you know, which, that, it's, uh, there are teachers who actually deal with that, you know, they have to, yeah, the, the students rely on them so much that it's important to create that kind of boundary, you know, and, you know, door closes, he turns back, okay, so here's the, you know, goes right back into this, you know, ridiculous plot, absolutely love it. And and the thing, you know, you might need a substitute. <laughs> and then we have the... Uh, yeah, we see that even in the framework, Mac remains Turtle Man. He is still slower than... You know, in in reality, it's, it's compared to Elena, and here it's compared to Hope. And... See. Yeah, and and she's also learning engineering, and yeah, really, really clever idea of this thing of you know, she she took this Hydra drone dwarf, and yeah, you know she she was gonna return it. She put it in the bag so you you know, and the checkpoint very very tense and. Yeah, they arrest a potential inhuman. And let's see. Then we have the. Yeah, um, Madam Hydra, very clearly concerned whether or not Fitz is going to recognize Sim, uh, Gemma, and, you know, betray her, but, yeah, betray Madame Hydra for Gemma, and, let's see, it didn't end well. <laughs> I like that even in the framework, somehow, for some reason, it's always rain related it's always you know it's been very rainy recently and then the other person says something about an umbrella or something you know just and and you know right after they have this very cliche scene you know handcuffs and Colson's like what did, did I say it wrong and yeah very cool to meet Mace and <laughs> He's he's much subtler than in the. Is that his regret? Does he regret be? Oh right, because he regrets lying about the the thing. 
so he's yeah maybe that's it but but yeah um you know he's like ah pay for this please just jeff it's, you know Mr. Patriot, that's my father. And let's see. Yeah, we, we see that they have these potential inhumans as refugees at S.H.I.E.L.D. And, and we have the line, make society great again. Yeah, they're not subtle. They know what they're doing with this episode. This is very clear criticism of Trump's America. You know, this episode came out April 11th, 2017. So, yeah. Seriously respect a TV program to actually taking a stand like that. Like, when you think about, you know, Trump has, has thrown hissy fits over just the tiniest little nothings of, of criticism from various people. And I appreciate Mac trying to instill values and hope. And she loves chopping mall, but he's going to fast. You know, he's he's pretending he doesn't love that silly robot movie, but he's still going to fast forward through the bad parts. And yeah, really, really like emotionally you know, just, yeah, really, really hard to to watch when Hope is arrested. And just the, just the image of, of May picking up the this little child, just, yeah. And, you know, right in front of, of Daisy. And I like, you know, the, you know, oh, you know, maybe one day we could have like a, a fleet of Quinjets, but right now we just have the one and it's, it's not in the best shape kind of thing. And the, yeah, uh, Gemma, still not a fan of, of Ward, did not found the fan, fan club. And, you know, he says, I'm sorry. And she's like, what? And he's like, you know, I shouldn't have left Daisy back there. It's it's quaint, hipster even. Jeez, I thought you were trying to cheer him up. And the let's see, I I appreciate that they refer to it as crossover. You know, like they there's a lot of different terms you could use for this idea of you know there's two separate worlds. And you can go from one to the other, but crossover has a very specific meaning in comic book terminology, you know, and yeah, it, it is indeed when characters from one story appear in a different story, you know, so yeah, it's, it's quite appropriate. And yeah. Um, Ophelia mentions, you know, she was treated as less than human. She was a slave to S.H.I.E.L.D., which, yeah, that's, she's not really wrong. That is obviously how she, you know, like, yeah, that, that is technically the, the situation that it was. She was not... Yeah, really, really appreciate the, yeah, and, and, you know, Daisy realizes, you know, the hope that you lost. And there's a great little moment where we think Mac remembers, he's like, you're Daisy Johnson, I'm sorry, the other agent told me to say this, and he's got the, the there's like the microphone, just, yeah. Cool fight. <laughs> uh, Colton, just try not to get killed. And yeah, they confront Radcliffe, and you know, he insists there is no escape. And I do appreciate, you know, yeah, you can see how this is like, this is what he at least thought he wanted, you know, re retirement with Agnes, 
that was that's what he made the the framework for but he does also you know say it's a gilded cage and and you know he's he said there's only so many mai tais you can drink and you know and it is actually you know not i'm not saying that anybody should be forced to work or forced to work more than they feel comfortable with but it has been you know there are studies that show there are a number of people who don't actually like going on retirement you know they want to they they may not they won't you know they reach a certain age where they can't do like a 40 hour work week but they want to do something you know and yeah very cool fight on the elevator it's, you know reminded me somewhat of um, Captain America's Winter Soldier and let's see yeah yeah I like you know Radcliffe says she found a loophole I'd be impressed if I wasn't already dead and I like that both Radcliffe and Ophelia say to the other don't pretend don't lie and the thing of you know yeah as you know yeah as I had theorized and I'm sure other people had guessed it yeah she threw those word, words back in Radcliffe's face you know about you know as long as it's to save people it's okay if it's just Oh, oh, right, right. It's okay to lie to save someone, something like that, you know. You taught me that. And, you know, she points out, do you know how degrading it is to live in a, in a closet to, you know, yeah, these various... Let's see. Um... Right, and, and yeah, when, when, you know, May walks up to Mac and says, thank you for your service. Hail Hydra, you know, just really, yeah, excellent, just, yeah, completely soul-crushing moment. And, let's see, yeah, Simmons does manage to convince Ward not to shoot fits and you know another really great scene like they're really giving Elizabeth Henstridge some really powerful scenes you know this episode the previous one just yeah and <laughs> I like you know so Radcliffe is trying to explain to, to Fitz and can convince him and he says we watched football real football and after all of that, Fitz still shoots Agnes, which, you know, we know that means permadeath, because her real body has passed at this point, you know, so, yeah, the, it's going to be difficult to, to get Fitz back, there is really, and, and the, at the very, let's see, in the, in the post credit scene, that's also reaffirmed that, you know, Fitz, like obviously, you know, at the end of the day, if the if they are to have any chance of having Fitz back, they do have to get yeah, get Fitz out of out of the framework. You know, if if you die in the framework, yeah. The body can't live without the mind. <clears throat> and and Mac shows up to to shield and says that he wants to, to help and you know yeah really really excellent ending I I'm really excited to see where it goes next so I'm to be trivia for this episode Let's see <laughs> starting for this episode the introductive sequence previously on maze uh, yeah yeah on shield is no longer presented with Phil Coulson's voice, but with Daisy Johnson's. When Mace shows Coulson and Simmons the shield, Wall of Valor, two of the first names, 
appearing are A. Gerton and G. Kitson. Reference to Art Department Coordinator Aaron Gerton and the writer of this episode, George Kitson. In the boardroom... Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. The Make America Great Again reference. <laughs> Holden Radcliffe's Island House in the Framework is the same house with the bell tower as Mr. Rourke's house on Fantasy Island. And... Let's see that... Um, right, right. Uh, so Goof, someone entered... Yeah, it was it was incorrectly regarded as Goof. Some you know someone will point out. So yeah, Ward could easily kill both Ada and Fitz, but doesn't do it. However, moments ago, Gemma was pleading him not to act. And yeah, a lot of the best lines from this episode have been entered into the memorable quotes section. Right, uh, very cool that we got a name drop for Madame Hydra. And I think, right, it is very cool. Like, Mace is one of the first people we've met who actually, possibly the first, who literally, you know, like, personality-wise, he's somewhat different from the, the real world. But he has the same job as the, the um, you know, yeah, he's actually, he's head of S.H.I.E.L.D. just like he is in the real world. And let's see. I think that might be about um right I like how you know like obviously there's tension between Gemma and Ward because of you know what's what the real Grant Ward has done, but this leads Gemma to lie to Grant many many times, and yeah you know once he has a shot at taking out Madame Hydra, who he knows to be a villain, or, or Fitz, the Doctor, who he knows to be a villain, yeah he you know. He comes very close to taking that shot. You know, he doesn't have as much reason to trust Gemma as, yeah, his his own experience. And let's see. I think. Right, I like that the, the thing of Coulson making his own soap because he thinks the blue soap everyone uses is mind control soap. I, yeah, I appreciate that. Come, I think they make at least three different, you know, he says it to Daisy at, at the start in the first scene. Then, you know, he says it to Gemma when he comes back, you know, and, and says, you know, I make my own soap, so should you. And then, you know, near the end, you know, I make my own soap. And she says, hipster. And I think that might be... Yeah. Um, I will be able to do a another episode tomorrow. And until then... Oh, Gemma, if only you knew the trials and tribulations I've endured. I am fresh out of sympathy for liars who kidnapped my friends and replaced them with killer androids. Don't forget about implanting bogus memories and letting me think I'm off my gourd. Not cool, bro.